only thing we can do worse than telling the American people the truth is, in fact, raise false hopes. And then when it doesn't occur, they go, oh, my God, something really must be worse than I thought it was. Ah, uh, sage advice from the man in the White House. Lunch Bucket Joe saving the world one severe illness and death at a time. And now, Jimi Hendrix. Now I got I got a lot of crazy uh, crazy left wing crazy people today. Here's the uh, the headline in the New York Times today. Omicron threatens red America. When they say red America, they mean patriotic Americans. We know that they are red. This, I don't use red and blue state because red is the color of the left and we're the only country in the world that uses red to describe patriotic flag-waving Americans and blue to describe communist violent mobs, looting, sacking, plundering, rioting, black block. Uh, stuff, you know, so I don't use that. But the New York Times excited to announce Omicron threatens red America. Michael, how many deaths have been attributed in the United States to the Omicron strain? From what we can tell, the answer is zero. I, I, I think that's right. I, I, I think I heard someone on television yesterday say that there was one U.S. death. They say they've spotted Omicron in 36 states now. Um, and we uh, crossed a threshold, uh, according to the official statistics, of 800,000 American deaths being attributed to the Wuhan Red Death inside the United States of America. And as far as I can tell, and now they say Omicron in 36 states. And um, I can't find a single news story telling me that there's been a death in the United States that has been attributed to the Omicron strain. Zero point zero. And in the UK, which is another country altogether, the United Kingdom, um, where they use a lot of different words than we do, have you noticed that? They're attributing one death to the Omicron variant, one death, one single death they have attributed to the Omicron uh, variant of the Wuhan Red Death. You know, and the Delta variant, of course, was was rampant. You'd think that Delta Airlines was upset by then. They're like, hey, come on, give us a break. If you're going to name the uh, strains after airlines, what are you going to have like the, um, the uh, you know, Southwest strain and the uh, British Airways strain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, you know, honestly, they must have been, that was a PR hit for them, wasn't it? The Delta strain of death. That's not very good. Come on. We have the American Airlines strain. <laughs> yeah, but the uh, New York Times, they're very excited to announce Omicron threatens red America. In many communities, most adults remain unvaccinated. They're really held on to the vaccine. But, you know, what, what, where are all the stories about the treatments that are available and about the Biden administration and the Biden FDA sitting on therapeutics and treatments that have, according to Dr. Marty McCary of the Johns Hopkins University Medical Center, According to Marty McCurry, they, they have zero deaths once you uh, administer these pills. Nobody dies. That would be a 100% success rate. But he says right now the uh, studies that they have thus far suggest a 90, 91% success rate at preventing death. And you don't see our political leaders talking about this at all. Quite amazing. Now, let, let me go back to this New York Times piece for just a second. Omicron threatens red America. Many communities, most adults remain unvaccinated. And then David Leonhardt, a uh, left-wing hack uh, from the DNC steno pool, uh, typed up the story in the New York Times. And listen to this lead sentence. Tucker Carlson could do it. So could Laura Ingram, Mark Levin, or Donald Trump himself. What could they do? 
One of these conservative figures could go on the air and explain that the Omicron variant has placed much of their audience in grave danger. Again, let's go back to how many deaths have been attributed. You know what's uh, placing uh, our audience in grave danger? The fact that Joe Biden and the White House and the Fed Food and Drug Administration are not fast-tracking these life-saving treatments, these life-saving therapeutics. That is putting our audience in danger, since what, that's what the New York Times is so concerned about here. Taught the entire audience in grave danger, not just danger, but grave danger. What other kind is there? They could remind people that they've been skeptical of vaccines at times. It's really Donald Trump has been skeptical of it. He's the uh, Operation Warp Speed brought in a uh, miracle, uh, miracle uh, amount of time. Stay Three vaccines to not just the United States, but the world and American pharmaceutical companies. Is, is that right? Uh, I know that uh, Tucker Carlson is not anti-vaccine. I, I know that uh, as a fact. I am personally vaccinated. I also believe, you know, like Democrats do with abortion in choice. Uh, but uh, but that's me. So this is the New York Times piece. They could remind people that they've been skeptical of vaccines at times, but that Omicron is different. It's so contagious that it may quickly sweep the country. That's what they're saying. You know, I mean, again, the like world at war music, we're, we're uh, dying, it's uh, doomsday. As they issued this warning, they could still take their usual swipes at the political left, mocking panicky liberals for wearing masks outdoors and forcing children to sit apart in cold schoolyards. They're very thin-skinned, aren't they? Very, very, they're like little schoolgirls. Conservatives don't need to do any of that. They just need to take a COVID-19 vaccine, the quote, Trump vaccine, end quote, that could save their life. This is the first time they've ever called it the Trump vaccine, and they do it mockingly in quotation marks, the New York Times. I don't have any illusions about how likely this scenario is, but I do think the unvaccinated Americans who are disproportionately Republican are now in even more danger than a few weeks ago. I, I, Omicron seems to be qualitatively more contagious than any earlier variant no out of the Chinese communist city of Wuhan, where they have the Wuhan Institute of Virology. As my colleague Emily Anthes writes in a roundup of the latest development, she writes, in South Africa, Omicron spread twice as fast as the highly infectious Delta variant. In Britain, officials have estimated that 200,000 people are becoming infected with Omicron every day. In Denmark, Omicron cases are doubling roughly every two days. They love to use uh, European countries because they and envious or something like that. In the U.S., partisanship is the biggest factor determining vaccination rates. If Democrat voters made up their own country, there's a thought. <laughs> what country would that be? Uh, North Korea is already available. It would be one of the world's most vaccinated, with more than 91% of adults having received at least one shot. Why would you have one shot? The Johnson & Johnson, which they just pulled yesterday, the FDA did. Only about 60% of Republican adults have done so. This is, uh, they're very bitter. You can feel the bitterness of the New York Times there. The vaccination gap has created a huge gap in death rates, one that has grown sharply during the second half of the year. Now, you know, if you can't believe the New York Times, who can you believe? Then they have a little graphic here that uh, shows that what they just said is true because they got a line on a thing here and it goes like that. And then the Democrat line goes like that. See, so they got that going for us. And that's the New York Times. Now, again, Great Britain has attributed, I believe, one death. And the United States, as far as I can tell, I heard somebody on the cable television yesterday say there was one U.S. of death attributed. Uh, but it's going to spread like wildfire, they say. And, you know, I mean, it's a no joke. They, it's, you know, 5.3 million deaths worldwide have been attributed to the Wuhan Red Death. It keeps morphing. They probably planned it that way, using our tax dollars at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Uh, speaking of which, I want to get to that nice lady in uh, this hour as well, who was uh, just wonderful. And I do want to 
go back, not like Jen Psaki circle back, but I want to go back for just a moment and uh, talk about this um, this experience that I had with uh, and 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 again, I didn't know until my uh, my younger brother in Chicago in a conversation a couple of days ago, who uh, who tells me that he's had it twice the woo. Um, and he said, and I was taught my best girl had the taste and smell issues and still does. And I said, I really haven't had the taste and smell issues. And my brother said, well, I didn't have a lot of tastes, but, but I smell s cigarette smoke everywhere I go. And I, and I kind of gasped, probably not really, but I kind of, maybe on the inside, I probably gasped a little. And I said, what are you, what are you telling me? You smell cigarettes? And he said, yeah, I'm outside, I'm at home, nobody smoking. and he never smoked cigarettes. And, uh, and he said, and I, I had this like overwhelming smell of uh, cigarette smoke. And I said, I've been having that. And I said, you know, not only, you know, I first tested positive for the woo on November 24th, but I have been mentioning, if not complaining, to my best girl for months now. And I mean, like six months. I've been saying casual walks through the park, nobody around, certainly nobody smoking. And I have a very good sense of smell. I always have. Um, and, uh, and I, I smell cigarette smoke. But I've been saying this for six months. And I first tested positive on November 24th, which is just weeks ago. And my brother said this to me the other day. And I said, aha, aha, what is this? And then uh, finally yesterday, I went and I did a little bit of research on Al Gore's amazing internet, peace be upon him. And I found, in fact, that there are several news stories, but very few, saying that people have had this same symptom, if uh, that's the correct uh, use of the word symptom in this case, and I think it is. Other people, a lot of people, I guess, have had smelled garbage or sewage, and that becomes like an overwhelming uh, feature of their daily life. But I did when I went, I found Medical Express distinct differences exist between sense of smell distortions associated with COVID-19. And I read this story from the Medical Express from December 13th of, uh, of this year, just, uh, just you know, a week ago or so. And, um, and I was uh, reading it to see what I could find. Others smell cigarette smoke, for example, when no odor, so odor source is present, a condition called phantosmia. I have phantosmia. Uh, it sounds like a, like a foot fetish or something, phantosmia. I have phantosmia, apparently, according to this particular right from uh, this particular outlet. And I was, I said, aha, that is very interesting. Then I found a local station uh, in the United States, KFVS 12, uh, KFVS 12 News. And I went and I read this story and they got this uh, punk rock woman with uh, magenta mohawk and sideburns and a uh, picture of her uh, jamming something up her nose or something she's breathing into a bag is what she's doing. And this woman, a very interesting Cleveland woman suffers from COVID side effect that makes everything smell like cigarette smoke. Aha, uh -huh, I said. So I'm not, not, not only, but it, it answered. And here's the thing, again, I just tested positive for the first time on November 24th, but I've been having this one particular, I'll call it a symptom, for months and months. That raises the question, did I actually have this months and months ago before I ever knew it? But I was essentially asymptomatic and I was uh, complaining, I guess, of fatigue and uh, and I didn't associate these things. I just thought, well, the fatigue, you know, I'm life is not normal, and I'm not exercising as much, not out and about as much, and uh, so I'm being lazy, and that might explain this fatigue. And I had no explanation for the cigarette smoke. Right? And then and then I found a story out of the UK uh, from the Sun in the UK, and the headline is: Here's a picture of this guy, phantom fag smell. Non-smoker who caught COVID-19 says he can now only smell cigarettes. And they say a dad who caught COVID-19 says he now only smells cigarettes. Mark Cowell, 46 years old, says the bizarre long COVID stench makes him feel like he's smoking 30 fags a day. So that's what they call cigarettes in the UK. It's a different country altogether. 
they use words differently. The constant ashtray aroma is making him depressed. Mine is on and off. It's not constant. But I smell cigarettes in the strangers. And I have been for months. And now I have to ask, was my fatigue and the cigarette smell, uh, were these signs of a, um, you know, my catching it months and months ago, and then maybe I caught a second round of it just weeks ago? Huh. That's uh, kind of interesting, huh? Speaking of which, you know, the best-selling Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifier uses proven oxy technology that quickly destroys funky viruses, odors, mold, and a whole lot more. More than 140,000 already sold. You know, it works like a champ. Any smell will vanish after just a few seconds with the thunderstorm being on. Odors from litter boxes, trash cans, cigarette smoke, dirty diapers, Michael Moore, and more are no match for the thunderstorm. The powerful thunderstorm sends out O3 molecules that seek out and destroy odors. These molecules even go behind and under furniture. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. Best of all, no filters to buy over and over again. Saves you money, cash, lots of hassle, logistics, putting it on your calendar. No siree, Bob. Start enjoying your home again. Get several thunderstorms. Right now, you can save 200 American dollars on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. You get three units for under 200 American dollars. Put one in your basement, your bedroom, family room, and your kitchen. You know, wherever you like to have clean, fresh air. Go to EdenPureDeals.com. Put in the discount code CHRIS3. CHRIS and the number 3 to save $200. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is CHRIS3. And shipping is free. Yeah, yeah. Cigarette smoke. I never even heard this. And I had it. I've never, I, I, I'm not very bright. Uh, never occurred to me. Maybe it's a symptom for the Wuhan that I ne never heard of, that nobody ever talks about. So there it is. I share. That's what I do. I share. There's only one Chris Plant. The Chris Plant Show. Washington's Mall. W-M-A-L.